Okay, so today we are looking at Corora Linux 16. Now, I have had a look at Corora Linux 15. Uh, this time I'm having a look at uh, version 16, which is of course based on Fedora 16. Uh, now, if you wanted links to either of those reviews for Corora 15 or Fedora 16, then you can click on the annotations here. But basically what Corora is, it is a, a Fedora-based distribution that adds in all of the programs and codecs and all the fun stuff that an average desktop user needs. Fedora does leave a lot lacking when it comes to the stock standard shipping distribution. Uh, you have to set up a lot of stuff yourself, whereas Corora really makes it easy for you with all your favorite applications and, uh, and tweaks and codecs and all of that fun stuff. Now, I have had a look at the GNOME 3 side of things in the previous release, uh, so this time I'm going to have a look at the KDE release. Now the KDE release, of course, because it is based on Fedora 16, it, we are rocking version 4.7.2 of KDE, and then you have all of those uh, KDE applications that come with it. Uh, now, as far as a KDE distribution goes, it's actually pretty decent. You get a large selection of games. I mean, I'm not going to even bother going through all these because there is uh, quite a number of them. And under graphics, you get all of the top tier open source applications that you come to expect from a KDE distribution, including GIMP and the Inkscape Vector Graphics Editor. Uh, then, of course, you also get uh, Digicam, Showphoto, and Gwenview. You also get Scribus in there as well, or Scribus, however you prefer to uh, however you prefer to pronounce it. And you also get a few ebook readers in there, and a font manager, and all all the other standard KDE tools that we all know and love. So we've got a fair few tools there under graphics, and really they chuck a lot of software in here and this is a 1.6 gigabyte download so although it is a decent sized download you do get all the software that you could possibly want out of the box which is nice uh, under internet you've got all of your needs covered there VoIP phone mail clients IRCs instant messages feed readers blogging BitTorrent you name it and you've got Firefox for your web browsing and then all of the standard KDE tools now the other n nice thing here that I have noticed in these menus is that all the menus are uh, are basically program as in app category driven. So instead of saying KTorrent, the main heading is BitTorrent client. So that way new users who come in here find a much easier time to, uh, to come across applications because by default they are labeled by what they do, not uh, by their names, which come on, they can be a bit weird. Chacock and Linphone and Capete and all of those names. They are, they do have them as subtitles as you can see, but the, uh, but the primary title and the one that catches your eye is uh, the function that that app fills, which makes a lot more sense in the long run, makes it a lot easier for new users. And, uh, and really, Corora as a distribution uh, does make its efforts to uh, be an out-of-the-box uh, di uh, distribution that fills the needs of new users uh, who do like the Fedora base or at least need that support or have liked it in the past. Definitely very convenient in that it doesn't take half as much time to set up. Uh, now, under multimedia, of course, we've got all the best stuff here. Uh, Amarok, yeah, I do prefer Clementine to Amarok, but Amarok is still fine. We've got an audio tagger, CD ripper, and all that other fun stuff. Disc burner, DVD ripper, we've got handbrake there, VLC, Audacity, Caden Live, and all of those other standard KDE tools. We also have the Dragon Player for your default video player. Uh, we, well, we've also got Juck in there, which recently featured on OMG Ubuntu. Which I'll throw a link in the description box as well. Um, now, under the Office, we've got LibreOffice 3.4, so nothing exciting there because we all know how LibreOffice rolls. Um, now, if we have a look under System, we've got all of these fantastic uh, KDE tools as well as a few extras here like Back in Time. Back in Time is basically a... Uh, it's like a backup tool that's uh, very similar to OS X Time Machine or Deja Dupe in, uh, in its backup, although it isn't quite as user-friendly, but it is a lot more customizable and you can have a lot more fun with it in that uh, you can customize where you want to where you want to save it, how many snapshots it should be taking, when it should be taking them, which folders to exclude and all that kind of stuff. Just some notes on KDE here. KDE has come a long, long way. Uh, it is definitely a very nice desktop now. It's very, It's definitely the most traditional out of all of the current generation de desktops that we are dealing with at the moment, all in that we still have the panel down the bottom and we all have uh, all the nice applets here which do uh, look very consistent and they have just the right amount of functionality built in for a taskbar that you could want. All the desktop animations and, uh, and desktop effects are very smooth. Uh, KDE now has the ability to use OpenGL rendering, uh, so I don't actually have it enabled here, but you can see when you go under desktop effects, under advanced, you can, you can choose the OpenGL2 shaders, which, uh, if you have 
have a decent graphics card, it's quite nice. Having said that, the performance impact of the desktop effects is minimal. Uh, both when you have them enabled and disabled, the, uh, the KDE desktop is extremely snappy. And uh, compared to where we are now with a lot of composited desktops, uh, this is definitely one of the snappier ones that I've used. Uh, you do have all of the tiling effects here, so much like the Aero Snap that we all know and love, that's been in KDE for some time now, but it's a nice little productivity tweak that they like to throw in there. And then of course we do have all the widgets that uh, KDE is famous for. And uh, some interesting ones here that I haven't noticed before is Acon Notes List and Acon Notes uh, Note. Now, I'm not exactly sure what these are, but judging by the name, they apparently tie into the Aconardi server, which uh, which basically is a, is a way to tie in all your information with the KDE applications. Definitely ties in all its applications very nicely, and any native KDE application, so for instance, if you have Gwenview, or possibly uh, Digicam, or any of those uh, native KDE applications, you can easily come in here with all kinds of plugins, and it will have all of the, uh, it'll have all kinds of import and export functionality here, uh, just built into the, built into the apps, which is pretty, which is pretty fantastic. I mean, you've just got all these options here you can choose from, and you can import from all of these options here as well. Uh, now, the other nice thing is that then when these applications need to speak to each other, they usually do so through Aconardi. Now, Aconardi is basically a KDE uh, server tool, which just helps to keep all of the information synchronized between applications. The notes that you put on the desktop will then be able to synchronize into other applications, and you can also throw in uh, other plugins here, uh, depending on what you have in the repos. You can install functionality for things like Google Data, like your Google Documents, your Google Contacts, Google Mail, and all that fun stuff. And then once you've got that, you can tie that in with the contact personal information manager suite, and it keeps everything synchronized and neat and tidy for you, which is pretty fantastic. And contact in itself is quite a, uh, an amazing alternative to Outlook and most of the applications that uh, that, that a lot of enterprises use. Uh, we have a time tracker built in here. So it keeps a log of what you're doing and for how long, so that it makes it easy for billing purposes, pop-up notes. Uh, notebooks can all be synchronized via a Kanadi notes and local notes, which is very, very slick. As we've seen before, you can now have those desktop widgets that sync into your uh, into your notebooks here in contact. You've got your journal, you've got your feed reader, you've got your to-do list, you've got your calendar, contacts, mail, and summary. So uh, really, a lot of these KDE tools are becoming more and more powerful uh, just with every release that comes through. And with KDE 4.8 around the corner, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how they tie in the online services, uh, similar to how GNOME has with uh, with its uh, with its ability to import Google contacts and documents and things of that nature. As it is based on Fedora 16, you do get a lot of the performance. Uh, you do get a lot of the performance perks that Fedora 16 touted with uh, with its System D as a replacement for SysV. So boot up time is very snappy. Battery life is just fine. Uh, and in my experience, there, there really hasn't been much to complain about here in this distribution at all. One other thing I want to mention is Firefox. Now, generally speaking, distributions like to leave Firefox stock standard, except for maybe modifying the search engine so that they can get a bit of revenue. I'm looking at you, Linux Mint. Uh, however, the this time in Corora, they've actually uh, thrown a KDE optimization kind of skin over the top of it. So it makes it all the KDE icons come through here, and it just looks a lot more at home in this setting. Uh, so you can see here about Firefox, we are running version 1.8.0, but you can see we've got uh, the little KDE dragon sitting there. And you can see under Oxygen KDE options, you can customize how you want your Firefox to look and how you want it to blend in with the KDE desktop. So this is a very nice little add-in. It's a very nice touch uh, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to the vanilla Firefox. Uh, it's just good to see that the developers of this distribution uh, are thinking about these little things and making it easier for the new user and making it slightly more consistent user experience. Now, the other nice thing is they do have links to the help center on the desktop, as that can be a bit hard to find sometimes in KDE. And they have a readme here as well for all of your information as to installing extras, which they do make very easy through, uh, through Jockey, which they have ported from the Ubuntu side of things, which automatically pulls in your drivers for things like NVIDIA cards and AMD ATI graphics cards. Uh, they've also got a nice easy package in their repos for easily installing Flash because we all know how much of a pain installing Flash can be on Fedora and that's been one of the major bugbears for uh, many a Linux distribution reviewer. Uh, there's also a Skype helper package which helps pull in the dependencies that you're going to need to install Skype. So really it just streamlines the whole Fedora uh, experience and makes it so much easier for the new user and really it's it's distributions like this that, uh, that keep Fedora interesting in my opinion. 
Uh, stock standard Fedora really doesn't have much going for it. Technically, it does have a lot of uh, cool technology that I've mentioned in my Fedora 16 review, but uh, seeing a distribution like Corora capitalizing on that technology and making it nice and easy and accessible for the new user and uh, and just giving them information that they need up front with, uh, with nice, easy to navigate menus, a healthy selection of default applications, uh, and then building, of course, on that on that stable uh, Fedora base. And overall, it's 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 quite a polished user experience. So, am I going to hang here for any period of time? It all depends at this stage. I'm still experimenting with a few Ubuntu derivatives, but uh, but I definitely I used to be running Corora 15 uh, before the 11.10 Ubuntu cycle came around, and I was very impressed with it. I was running the GNOME 3 desktop, uh, and this time, obviously, I'm running the KDE 4.7.2 desktop. So, uh, I mean, both of them I have not had any issues with at all. They're very convenient to set up uh, and even for screencasting it was much easier this time around uh, FFmpeg and libx264 uh, was already there installed uh, now speaking of which if any of you want info on how to do these screencasts uh, I will put links in the description box so that I've uh, updated a blog uh, my blog posts which has details on all of that so you can you guys can get your hands dirty doing uh, screencasts of your own now there was there was a few questions about the Ubuntu 1110 release cycle in the comments so definitely check those out and that will give you some helpful pointers for getting going on uh, Ubuntu 11.10 based distributions like Linux, Linux Mint 12 and all of those. But definitely go and check my blog out, infinitelygalactic.blogspot.com and feel free to follow me on Twitter if you so wish. Again, links are in the description. Once again, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for all your support this year. Um, and also this week there should be more videos coming up. Last week I was uh, out of town so it made it a bit difficult to do more videos but there should definitely be more content coming your way in the near future. So subscribe if you wish. If you're feeling generous give the video a thumbs up and I shall see you in the very near future.